Minutes. Um, I will give some insight and preliminary results of the excavation of Building 23, which was conducted in 2014 and 2015. And the goal was to gain information about the economic and social basis of everyday life in the 6th century in a Byzantine city. The early Byzantine settlement of whatever happens here. Oh. I just close it, I think. Yes. Um, Byzantine team, a certain guard was uh, um, in southern Serbia. It's supposed to be the imperial city of Justiniana Prima, which is known from the Copius de Edifici. Um, it exists. I'm sorry about the music, but we can't do anything about it. It's, it's, it's not the music, it was just the. the uh, yeah. <laughs> I know how well. you feel, being an Apple user. <laughs> well, the city I uh, conducted uh, was, uh, existed for nearly 90 years, um, which gives under. And we have any um, settlement before and after, so we have understepped insight into the settlement of the 6th century, which is quite nice. Um, the excavation is originally that take place since 100 years. First, it was uh, on the representative buildings like churches, and an emphasis nowadays is on the building quarters, uh, living quarters. And um, so we conducted the excavations on Building 23 with the methodology of household archaeology, uh, with the integrations of archaeobiology and salt sciences. But unfortunately, they didn't finish their work, so I can't present their results <laughs> <laughs> now. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's still ongoing work. Um, building 23 is a modest example of architecture in the town, which is um, a single room house with masonry base and walls made of adobe. Um, and it's observed in the most elementary houses in the city. Uh, it has dimensions of four to six meters and was equipped with a fireplace. Finds of charred planks and regular connections may be the remains of a shelf, an attic story, or um, an intermediate floor. Flat pieces of glass, which belong to um, the occupation phase, uh, indicate windows. The house was built close to the street and uh, it allowed direct access to the rooms through an 80 centimeter wide doorway. It was possible to determine the relative chronology of the building and its built environment. Um, the walls were attached to a tower of the inner fortification walls, which uh, is seen as the nucleus of the town. Um, and a drainage duck once stuck into the solid rock, um, dewatered the rainfall from the roof of the tower into the street. When building 23 was built above, it prevented further use, and a new one, um, a new canal was built next to it. Also, the house was orientated on the already existing corridor floor. The simple configuration of the house and the multiplicity of potential types of use in a single room structure challenged the examination. The finds indicate a habitational function. This is a crucial point where the fieldwork and the theories of household archaeology come together. <coughs> the household will be used as object to apply uh, middle range theories, as Robert Merton defined them, to connect the empirical observation and the social theory. Archaeologists dig out house structures and not households, and we analyze material culture which reflects the human activity and not the activities themselves. Therefore, all archaeological remains build just a frame within the interpretation can be done. Before analyzing the household or the household inventories, it is necessary to keep in mind cultural formation processes. In contrast to grave inventories or catastrophic events, in a vacated town, property is taken away. Um, the remaining objects are in most cases uh, regarded as worthless to the former owners and therefore left behind. This has to guide the considerations when we work on vacated towns. Working with an elementary constructed house and few objects connected with specific activities restrict the possibilities the house and many rooms and outer spaces may provide. Looking at the installations of Building 23, we see that the single room structure was equipped with a fireplace, small one, 
and uh, we see many shirts of Pitoy with our storing vessels. So all those storing facilities are uh, indicated. Except some fragments of glass lamps which belong to a leavening filling, we have no indicates for um, artificial light. So um, the workers depend on the light from the windows, the fire light from the fireplace and the entrance. This restricts the activity areas in the front of the house. Um, since stepping out of the house means di stepping directly on the street, there were no outdoor working places belonging to this house, except one keeps in mind some kind of um, remote outdoor working place. To gain insights into the organiza organization of work, it is necessary to examine the activities in and outside the building. Thus, it is possible to understand the agency the household performs in the settlement system regarding social issues and economic aspects. In the elementary article, Rick and Rakia defined a household with four categories of function production, distribution, reproduction, and transmission. Since it is traditionally regarded as fundamental to a working town system, production is the best examined aspect in most cases. I will also concentrate on them and only roam the other topics. Um, let us take a look at the crucial finds. As a whole, we don't see any extravagant objects. Unspecific buckles and pearls of bones can be part of every kind of clothing. Several mm -hmm. knives and tools can be used for different tasks. Potential stooly may have been used to keep rockets, and uh, only the sickle allows a closer look to the definition of use in an agrarian context. The finds I presented um, are connected with handcraft and rural economy, which cover, if you follow the late, late Roman bishop Johannes Chrysostomos, the male part of the work. Furthermore, he declared that women should work in private, not in public, and that they are better <laughs> in um, doing housework, raising children, and working on textiles than men. <laughs> As you might have noticed, there were no finds of textile production or related crafts in the house. <coughs> if I believe what an ascetic priest said about the everyday life of women, I can say that we have no evidence of typical female work in Building 23. I don't want to go too deep into gender relations because this is a topic for itself. Being aware that dichotomic classification of work might reflect modern attitudes on um, gender, it is difficult to allot labor to male or female parts. Assuming that this is not an anthropo anthropologic constant, Michael Mitter or noted that in pre-industrial Europe, the division of labor allowed women to be close to the house to interrupt the work so they were able to keep an eye on their children if they weren't managed by collective. This observation indicates that women could also go to garden or field and harvest, and thus often can be related to the finds in my house. In contrast to textile work, this is just less obvious. Though many written res uh, resources of many other holy men emphasize the place of women at home, this habitation orientations of an ideal world may not cover the real life of the privileged women who had to work. Let us take a look at the other household functions. Distribution also includes the question of storage. A concentration of big shirts of Peter storing vessels on the floor level indicates storage facility in the utilization phase. Altogether, the finds don't seem to like they have belonged to rich people. The impression is underlined by the elementary design of the architecture without any fancy layout. If the building was a living space, it accommodated one or more persons who belonged to an average or low social stratum. Since the finds are not chronological sensitive enough, I can't tell how long the building was used. Although the relative age of determination indicates a later construction phase of the city, there are no hints of the lifespan of building 23. Um, it is possible that it shared at least two generations, living and working in this place, always according to prevalent social rules. They regulated the cohabitation or collaboration in a limited space without being codified, in our case, the house or the city. Pierre Bourdieu revealed how daily routines in a domestic setting are working as mechanisms of socialization. The biological and mental reproduction of the people consolidates social and economic structures in the town. Changes in this process may therefore affect changes in the system of the city, just as the other way around. The sociologist Anthony Giddens named this effect structuration. 
The analysis of installations, information processes helps to understand activities carried out in daily routine and how domestic space may be used and created. The household can be seen as a place where social roles are negotiated in daily routine and thus a social landscape which reflects the mentality of the dwellers. Um, it is difficult to trace transmission in an archaeological context, but it has to be considered at least as a cultural formation process. The fragments of carved bones seen here, um, belonging to a frame or maybe a chest, seem to be personal crafted. Some pieces are worked really elaborated, while others are not and show that someone tried to make it nice but was too unskilled. Since there are pieces with both accurate and untidily worked bows, the crafter could use to the movement. Uh, the other possibility is that we have here two persons working, one is skilled and one is just imitating. There are no other finds that indicate bone carving in my house, so I can't tell if the bone was carved here at another place. The options are nice to look at and uh, could have an ideal or concrete value. Therefore, it has the potential to be bequeathed. When the value decreased for some reason, the saving may have ended, but now we are entering the sphere of far-reaching interpretation. Also, a question of formation processes is the following phenomenon. Underneath the hair structure, we detected fetal bones of a sheep or a goat. This is, on the one hand, remarkable since fetal bones are really fragile and can easily be crushed down. On the other hand, keywords as fetus and fireplace may ring the alarm clocks of uh, bouts of symbolic action. In the archaeological context, it is not clear if it is a structure to position feature. It was laid down at the same time when leveling filling in the house was conducted. I can't definitely say if uh, that was a ritual, ritual deposition or just waste at a lucky place. But if it was a ritual, it doesn't seem to me purely Christian, which is remarkable in a time when the church raised its influence in a place next to the Episcopal Palace. Maybe it was just an act of rebellion, could well be. These domestic activities may display in little the organization of the whole settlement. One daily operation is strongly connected with a public outdoor space. A rather statistic observation shows the practical handling of waste. The distribution of fines is imbalanced between the inside and the outside of the house and its exterior, especially regarding the upper layers. We can see that some came from the upper zones, the slope and were just washed down. This may depict the pattern of disposal organization keeping the house clear and depollute the waste next to it. Since there is not that much waste, and garbage pits are really unlikely, unlikely in the shallow soil, there, was, uh, there should have been another way of disposal during the most of the occupation time. A literary source indicates that in other times, some kind of communal organization, <laughs> um, which seems to terminate the latest occupation phase, um, no, the other rubbish is accumulated outside the city walls, and this can be some kind of communal organization outside this, uh, in the city. Ongoing research on micro-waste patterns are likely to show if the finds we find here are sedimented in waste or if they are removed. This can show if the final finding spots were regarded as garbage dump or if it accumulated in the second process. I deduce from the architectural and functional degradation of the fortification wall, the house was built in a time when the supervising organization ceased. This may have been the Episcopal bureaucracy, which may have influenced the everyday religious practice. Inhabitants of the settlement began to arrange their life themselves. The disposal of waste, as well as storing strategy, get adapted to the new living conditions. In the later phase of the city, a horium in the vicinity of a house was used otherwise than storing food in big scale. Similar to the fortification wall, also this public building underwent architectural change and was obstructed with smaller installations. At this time, we find private um, storing facilities like building 23. Furthermore, the people grew at least supplemental their own food. Smaller households couldn't afford elaborate deco decorative craftwork, so they produced exchange of broad, convenient alternatives. The lifestyle changed from a consuming to productive subsistence, or rather from an urban to rural character. This process is also observed in other Byzantine settlements of the 6th and 7th century. When I started the project, I had a clear task. I had to dig out a household and get information about um, the Byzantine town in the 6th century. I would say it's no problem, but I'm not quite sure if I have a household here. <laughs> um, well, it could well be that we have uh, some kind of storage facility which belongs to a um, household entity in the vicinity. 
I would be fine with that. Um, although the House findings are too unspecific to determine the actions performed here, I think that having a look on the material from the household archaeological perspective may lead to new perspectives and questions to the material culture. Thank you very much.